Okay, let us discuss the next problem. So this is problem number 1.61. Uh, let me first make the diagram and then we'll discuss the, what the problem is saying. So we have something like this. And this angle is given to you alpha. And there are two blocks. One is this. They are calling it one. Another block, they are calling it two. Friction coefficient between block one and the incline is K1. And friction coefficient between block 2 and plank uh, incline is K2. It is also given K1 is greater than K2. Now let me read the question. So two touching bars A1 and 2 are placed on an incline plane. So these two bars are basically touching to each other. Incline plane forming an angle alpha with the horizontal. Incline plane forms an angle alpha with the horizontal. The masses of bars are equal to M1 and M2. So the mass of bar 1 is M1 and the mass of bar M2 is M2. So M1 and M2 is given to you. M1 and M2 that is the corresponding masses of 1 and 2. Coefficient of friction is K1 and K2. With K1 is greater than K2, the find out the force of interaction between the bars in the process of motion. So what is the force of interaction between these two bars? So this bar we have and this bar we have. So what is the force of interaction? So let us say I have to find out what is the force that is between these two bars. Second part they say is what is the minimum value of angle of angle alpha at which both bar start sliding down. So what should be the value of minimum alpha so that both bar start sliding down. So what is the value of alpha minimum? Let us analyze this problem. In this case, friction coefficient is K1 that is greater than K2. So this friction force, friction force on 1 will always be greater than friction force on 2 because K1 is greater. So friction force on 1 will be greater than our friction force on 2 uh, we have to basically also look for m1 and m2 masses uh, friction force on 1 what will be the value so this angle is alpha so this uh, this this angle is alpha so we will have m1 g cos alpha so mu will be mu uh, the friction force will be k times m1 g cos alpha on 1 and friction force on 2 will be k times k2 times m2 g cos alpha so in that case, I have to also look for uh, M1, M2. If friction force will not directly are related, it depends upon M1, M2. But acceleration, so let us find, if you see acceleration, as on this friction force will be K1, Mg cos alpha and downward force will be M1, G sin alpha. So resultant force will be on 1 is m1 g sin alpha minus k1 m g cos alpha acceleration will be g sin g cos g sin alpha minus k1 g cos alpha so you see acceleration of 1 will be lower than acceleration of 2 because this friction force will be greater so you see what will be the acceleration of 1 you can write acceleration of 1 will be g sin alpha minus K1 G cos alpha. You can prove yourself. For 2, acceleration will be for 2 acceleration will be G sin alpha. You can prove yourself minus K2 G cos alpha. Now see K1 is greater, so this term will be a smaller. K2 is a smaller, so this term will be a smaller. So you see A1 will be uh, smaller than A2. So this is A1. So let us call this as A1. And let us say this is A2. So A1 will be a smaller than A2. This means if this goes down, this will always remain in contact because acceleration of this is smaller, acceleration of this is higher. So both will go in down with a with touching to each other. So they cannot separate it. If the if acceleration of this is higher than this, then in that case they can separate out. 
but in this case it is impossible to separate so they will go th the both will go down with touching to each other no separation in this case are you getting or not now we can find out the friction forces easily so let us say draw the free body diagram so you will have a free body diagram for these two objects and then we can find easily so let us say for m1 for the forces that is acting you will have m1 g sin alpha this side and here we will have friction force now mu times n i am assuming you are able to understand this side you will have m1 g cos alpha and k times friction force so friction force will be k1 times m1 g cos alpha and this block will basically press to this block lower block so on lower block there will be a pressing force f that is an attraction force now if i draw the diagram for block 2 same thing now this block will have m2 z sin alpha downward Are you getting? Now on the the block two, uh, basically we'll have a pressing for upward direction. So this force is acting in the downward direction. Same force on the block two will be act on the upward direction. So pressing force F that will act in the upward direction. Now this block also going down, so a friction force will act, and the magnitude of friction will be K two times m to z cos alpha because normal reaction will be m to z cos alpha so friction force will be k2 times n n is m to z cos alpha now both block are going with acceleration a so this is going down with acceleration a this is also going down with acceleration a so now you can write the equation in the in the parallel direction in the inclined direction so for object 1 you can write m1 g sin alpha plus f are you getting minus k m1 g cos alpha k1 m1 g cos alpha is equals to m1 times a so this is equation number one if you write for object two you can write equation number two again m2 z sin alpha plus a minus f minus k 2 m 2 z cos alpha this is equals to m 2 a are you getting i need friction force what is the friction force ah, what is the interaction force f so what can i do is i can divide these two equation by m 1 and m 2 and then subtract so let us say i can get acceleration from this i can also get <laughs> sorry acceleration from this so this so this is my equation number one this is my equation number two so <coughs> you have to solve for capital F So let me see how many of you are able to solve this one. So solve for capital F. So what can you do? You divide this by M. So you will have G sin alpha plus F by M1 minus K1 G cos alpha. You solve yourself is equals to G sin alpha minus F by M2 plus ah, minus this time this would be minus minus g cos alpha minus k2 g cos alpha are you getting so now i can take a new piece i think we have copied this one so please keep copying so you will have g sin alpha goes out so you will have f by m1 minus k1 g cos alpha this is equals to minus f by m2 minus k2 z cos alpha so if you take f this side so you will have f uh, 1 by m1 plus 1 by m2 
this is equals to this goes this side so we will have k1 minus k2 g cos alpha so we will have f that will come out to m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 into k1 minus k2 into z cos alpha you check yourself are you getting this value or not so this is the force of interaction between these two object the next part the question of the next part says so b part what is the minimum value of alpha so this is the incline this is the angle alpha these are the two object so this asks what is the minimum value of alpha so that both block are start sliding you see in the first part of question we have already said this block will always slide this block will have less sliding tendency because acceleration of this is less <laughs> and acceleration of this is high so both will slide together so both will slide together always so you see both will slide together now see if you increase the alpha if alpha is very small these two blocks will not slide if you increase the alpha so if you start increasing the alpha this means this has a more tendency to go downward because the downward force will what are the downward force on this m1 g sin alpha this m2 g sin alpha so both will slide together so i can assume what is the total force downward direction i can assume what is the total force that is acting in the downward direction is m1 g sin alpha on 1 and 2 this is m2 g sin alpha so this is the total force in the downward direction m1 g sin alpha plus m2 g sin alpha now what is the friction force on this k m1 g cos alpha on this k2 m2 g cos alpha so the total friction force that is acting k1 m1 g cos alpha plus k2 m2 g cos alpha that is the friction force that is acting in the upward direction now this just slides this means acceleration is zero so this just slide with is zero acceleration so in that case total force in the downward direction is equals to total force in the upward direction this just slides question said what is the minimum alpha so that this just slides so if i have this is alpha minimum regretting so this i can find from here so this is alpha minimum we can say if you want this is alpha minimum everywhere so you will have alpha minimum so the total force in the downward direction this is equals to m1 plus m2 g sin alpha and this alpha is minimum this is equals to k1 m1 plus k2 m2 z cos alpha minimum are you getting so let us say multiply by z here cos alpha minimum so we will have sin alpha by cos alpha g cancels out so tan alpha minimum <coughs> this is k1 m1 plus k2 m2 divided by k1 plus uh, m1 plus m2 m1 plus m2 so let me write tan alpha minimum is given by k1 m1 plus k2 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 so this is the minimum alpha if the alpha is greater than this in that case system will go down with acceleration if alpha is less than this in that case system will not go but will not go downward direction it will remain as it is it will remain in a static equilibrium let us copy this one so important point in the second part we have the system will accelerate downward only if the total friction force is equals to total 
एम वन जी साइन अल्फा प्लस एम वन एम टू जी साइन अल्फा दिस मीन दैट टोटल डाउनवर्ड फोर्स इज इक्वल टू टोटल अपवर्ड फोर्स अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव दैट द सेलरेशन ऑफ ब्लॉक वन दैट द लोअर ब्लॉक इज ऑलवेज लेस देन द सेलरेशन ऑफ ब्लॉक टू एंड दस वाई इन दिस केस बोथ ब्लॉक विल गो टूगेदर दे के नॉट सेपरेट एंड दस वाई वी हैव ए फ्रिक्शन वी हैव ए इंट्रैक्शन फोर्स कैपिटल एफ If they these two block remain together in touch, then only there is a concept of interaction force. If they separate out, there is no interaction force. Are you getting or not? So you can even see you have found this interaction force F. This interaction force F will always be positive if K1 is greater than K2. If K1 is equals to K2, interaction force is zero. This means both block will Simply go with the same acceleration, but they are not pressing to each other. If K2 is greater than K1, in that case this will be negative. Interaction force is negative, and that physically has no meaning. You're getting or not? So we are getting the expression of interaction force K1 minus K2. This also verifies all the terms. If I want F to be positive, then I have to have K1 is greater than K2. That is given in the question. otherwise i cannot have interaction force interaction force is possible only if k1 is greater than k2 then only the, these two blocks are coming down with the back block that the upward block will pushing to the downward block if k1 is lesser than k2 in that case the lower block will not push up the the the, the upper block basically block 2 will not push in that case block 1 will have more acceleration block 2 will have less acceleration so block 1 will go fast block 2 will go slow are you getting now we'll discuss the next problem i think you have copied this one those who have missed something let us copy fast there is nothing new in this case simply solving equation we have so you can always solve so check whether you are missing something or not Okay let us finish this one here i think all of you have copied this one 